Who are the Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, also known as Shepherd's Rod? Davidians suffer from an unfortunate public branding problem. For many of you watching this video, the first thing and perhaps only thing you'll think of when you hear the word Davidian is the notorious standoff of the Branch Davidians led by David Koresh in Waco, Texas against law enforcement from February through April 1993, which led to their compound Mount Carmel Center being burned to the ground and 82 people dying. Davidians and the Shepherd's Rod are not Branch Davidians, but they are connected, so we're going to begin by making clear who these people really are. But first, I want to let you know that this video is part of a collaboration between myself and Matt Baker of Useful Charts. Matt has been charting out the family tree of Christian denominations, and this week his video includes a discussion of the Adventist branch. So once you've watched this video about the Davidians, head over there and learn more about where Adventists and some other denominations come from. Now to explain Davidians, let's go back to the beginning. The Seventh-day Adventist Church was officially founded in 1863. One of the co-founders of the church was Ellen G. White, whose writings are called the Spirit of Prophecy. White died in 1915. Four years later, in 1919, a man by the name of Victor Hotef joined the SDA Church. He had been born in Bulgaria, baptized as a member of the Bulgarian Orthodox Church, but now in Illinois, he discovered and accepted the teachings of the Adventists. In the 1920s, he moved to California, and in his new congregation, Hotef quickly became a leader. He was a Sabbath school teacher, and he dug deeply into the topics of Bible prophecy and the future. However, his teachings met with opposition, and ultimately, he was disfellowshipped from the church. Hatef appealed to the conference, inviting them to study his teachings, but he was rebuffed. In 1929, he completed a book called The Shepherd's Rod, in which he laid out his doctrines in a systematized way. The book was published in 1930, and a second volume was added in 1932. In 1935, Hotef and his followers purchased 189 acres of land nearby Waco, Texas to use as a headquarters for their teaching. In 1937, he formed the General Association of Shepherd's Rod Seventh-day Adventists, which later became the General Association of Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. However, the Davidians didn't have their own churches. Rather, Hotef taught that they should attend regular Seventh-day Adventist churches. The practice continues to the present. Their primary target in evangelism was Seventh-day Adventists, and today, in most Davidian groups, most or all evangelism is targeted at SDA church members. Over time, Hotef's teachings gained more influence and followers. Some estimates put the number of adherents in the 1950s around 100,000, but everything would quickly change. In 1953, a door-to-door -door campaign was launched to locate and provide Seventh-day Adventists with Davidian writings and magazines. Things were going well, but in 1955, unexpectedly, Victor Hotef died. The Executive Council of the General Association had not been prepared for this scenario. The day following Victor's death, his wife Florence met with the council and told them that Brother Hotef, as he was and still is known, had recommended she be made vice president before his death. Although no proof was given, the council did so, and Florence became the effective leader of the Davidians. Florence began publishing materials in the Symbolic Code magazine that she claimed were written by her husband before his death. One of these was a claim that Revelation 1136 prophesies a 42-month period which would end on April 22, 1959, with dramatic and visible events in the Middle East providing the validity of the Shepherd's Rod teachings, including the resurrection of her husband Victor. Florence challenged the Seventh-day Adventist church leadership to accept the Shepherd's Rod teachings, staking everything on the 1959 prediction. If it didn't come to pass, she said, it would prove them to be wrong. Not everyone believed that Florence was the right leader for the Davidians or that the prediction was true. In the same year of 1955, Benjamin Rodin claimed that God had revealed he should be in charge. Rodin presented as evidence letters that were signed with the name, The Branch. Isaiah 11.1 1 says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Rodin said that Jesus now identified as the branch, and claimed to simply be following the branch. When the council and Florence Hotef rejected his claims, he started his own organization and took followers with him. This group was known as the Branch Davidians. A catchphrase Rodin liked to use was, Get off a dead rod onto a living branch. The Branch Davidians rejected the 1959 prophecy publicly, and some other Davidians were skeptical. When ultimately the prediction didn't come to pass, the Davidians began to splinter, and many exited the movement. After discussions with the Seventh-day Adventist Church, ultimately in 1962, Florence and the board dissolved the organization she controlled and rejected the Shepherd's Rod teachings altogether. 
Let's briefly talk about what became of the Branch Davidians, and then we'll focus on the Davidians since this video is about their story. With Florence shutting down the operations of the Davidians in Waco, Texas, Ben Roden bought up everything he could. Roden and the Branch Davidians came to own the church's compound, New Mount Carmel, which soon became known as the Mount Carmel Center. In 1978, Ben Roden died and his wife Lois became the leader. She continued to modify Branch Davidian theology away from Victor Hotev's teachings, including stating that the Holy Spirit was feminine. A few years later, in 1981, Vernon Howell, a man in his early 20s who was born in the year of the failed prophecy, came to the compound and was well received by the Branch Davidians. In 1983, Howell ended up creating another splinter group called the Davidian Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, which many Branch Davidians followed. When in 1986 Lois Roden died, a power struggle ensued between her son George Roden and the Branch Davidians who continued to follow him, and Howell. After years of fighting between the groups, Howell got the upper hand and was able to take control of the Mount Carmel Center from the original Branch Davidian group and claimed to be the true leader of the Branch Davidians. Howell changed his name to David Koresh in 1990, which was part of his claim to be a messiah. David refers to King David from whom the messiah would come, and Koresh being Hebrew for Cyrus a biblical king sometimes called the Messiah for freeing the Jews from captivity. He also engaged in polygamy and taught many things different from what the Branch Davidians believed. The rest of that story, as they say, is history, when in 1993, Koresh's group of Branch Davidians bunkered down in the Mount Carmel Center after receiving a tip that the ATF was going to raid the building after obtaining a search warrant. The warrant revolved around evidence that the Davidians were stockpiling illegal weapons, but they also had been accused of child abuse and statutory rape. After a 51-day siege and gunfights resulting in deaths of both federal agents and Branch Davidians, the building became engulfed in flames on April 19, 1993 and burned to the ground. Only nine people left the building during the fire. Everyone else inside died. Most people today believe that Koresh was the leader of the Branch Davidians. Well, that title is one he claimed, but some Branch Davidians who rejected Koresh still exist today as the General Association of Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists and want nothing to do with him. They say today, Koresh was illegally usurping the name and identity of the Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, at least on paper. In his teaching, however, Koresh abandoned all things Branch Davidian, including the name. During the 1990s, Koresh and his followers did not self-identify as Branch Davidians. Instead, they called themselves the Students of the Seven Seals, only using the branch name for records in order to keep the branch property. Doug Mitchell, the president of this group during the time of the Waco siege, wrote the book Waco Untold, How David Koresh Stole the Identity of the Branch Davidians. Now, let's look back at before the events at Waco happened. After the failed 1959 prediction and the 1962 dissolving of the General Association of Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, the vast majority of Davidians still wanted nothing to do with the Branch Davidians. However, they weren't convinced that the prophecy had ever been legitimate. Florence Hotef had said that her husband made the prediction, but he had never spoken of it while he was alive. Rather than rejecting the Shepherd's Rod teachings, they rejected Florence and went on to re-establish Davidian organizations. A major controversy in all of this was the sermons and writings that Florence had published, which were supposedly Victor Hotef's work. Should these be viewed as authoritative doctrinal teaching? Davidians are unanimous in their acceptance of things Victor Hotef published himself in his life, but there were questions about what Florence published. These publications are referred to today as the New Codes, or sometimes derogatorily as the Florence Codes. For some Davidians, it was 100% rod only, meaning only what Hatef himself published. Perhaps these New Codes were forgeries, or maybe there were things written by Brother Hatef, but that he had intentionally not published, knowing something was wrong with them. Other Davidians, though, saw the New Codes as a mixture of truth and error, and were cautious to not throw out the baby with the bathwater. This today is still one of the greatest sources of contention between various Davidian groups, and yes, there's many of them. In fact, it's nearly impossible without a person becoming intimately familiar with all of Hatef's writings and then making a careful evaluation of the options to determine which of the groups existing today are the rightful heirs of the Shepherd's Rod movement. Here's some of the options. The most popular have shorthand names that people call them by since, as you'll quickly see, using the names they claim for themselves can be confusing. 
At davidiantoday.org, you'll find the website for the GADSDA, that means General Association of Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, one of the names Hotef used for the organization. They have a building in Waco, Texas called the Mount Carmel Center, the name Hotef gave to the original center Davidians used. Various Davidians often just call this group Waco. They republish Hotef's writings in a magazine format called the Symbolic Code, the same name Hotef used. Now, here's the website of a different group. You'll note that they are also the General Association of Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. They also have a Mount Carmel Center, two addresses in this case, and there's a symbolic code publication. This group is called Salem Among Davidians. Donna Dare is the big name here. Here's the third website. This group is headquartered in Missouri and uses the name of the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist Association. They also use the name Universal Publishing Association, which was the name Hotef used to publish his writings under originally. This group also self-identifies as Bayesian Hill, and that's what other Davidians call them. This is the website of the Universal Publishing Association. Sound familiar? But this one definitely is not a fan of the other one at Bayesian Hill. They also republish the original Symbolic Code publications. The website is upa7.org, and they're known as UPA7, or people refer to the man behind the website, Eric Edstrom. Then there's this website, once again, the General Association of Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. Oh, and they are also the Universal Publishing Association at the Mount Carmel Center. They also publish Symbolic Code. This one is in Mountaindale, New York, and they're known as Mountaindale. Mountaindale recently had a split, and that's this website's origin. They're called the Pre-11th Hour Ministry. One online Davidian writer who is somewhat prolific that's associated with them is Rob Peralta. A newcomer to the scene is Samuel Gonzalez, who bought a house on Mount Carmel Drive in Waco, Texas, and bought some domain names and has made some official-looking Davidian websites on them. This project is still in progress, but it looks nice. Gonzalez's websites include the General Association of Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, VictorHotef.com, Davidians.com, UniversalPublishing.com, ShepherdsRod.com, and more. The International General Association of Davidian Seventh-day Adventists is another one, but they don't have an online presence, but they do print the symbolic code. And finally, not because I've run out of organizations, but because I have to stop somewhere, is the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist Church, a.k.a. the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist Association, a.k.a. the Universal Publishing Association, Wavesheaf Ministries, and more, which publishes the Symbolic Code and has a Mount Carmel Center in Waco, Texas. No, not affiliated with the other two mentioned groups in Waco. I've mentioned it a bit already, but most of these organizations don't really like each other, and many view themselves as alone the true representatives of right theology. Salem says, Consequently, just as plain as heaven can make it, the truth stands out that the keys of the kingdom of heaven today have passed from the hands of the General Conference to the hands of the General Association of Davidian Seventh-day Adventists at Mount Carmel Center, P.O. Box 450, Salem, South Carolina, 29676, or 282 Davidian Way, Tamassi, South Carolina, 29686, as verily as they passed from the Sanhedrin to Peter in the days of Christ's first advent. Eric Edstrom at UPA7 says, Something is terribly wrong with Rob Peralta. He is going insane in his hatred of the work God has ordained to establish storehouses around the world to reach 21 plus million SDAs with the meat in due season, the original Shepherd's Rod message. He continues to attack the ministry of UPA7.org and propagate lies in a desperate effort to defend his idols, the apostate Florence Hotev worshipping knockout blown General Association of Davidian Seventh day Adventists, GADSDAs, located at Mountain Dale and Waco. Lennox Sam from the Davidian SDA Church says, The identifiable leading active Jesuits of Davidia are Bayesian Hill, the Bingham Dynasty, UPA7, Eric Edstrom Dystopia, Dr. Blogger, Robert Peralta. Rob Peralta says, Unbelievably, the title of this post is basically what we heard recently from UPA7 Eric Edstrom. This brother, and he needs no introduction as to falsehood, has just about topped himself in his latest statements of twisting truth. Mountaindale says, the Bayesian heresy. The above teachings, if accepted, lead the believer to a host of many other theories taking them further away, out to sea, and only miracle may pull one back to the solid earth of truth. Bayesian Hill says, who is the heaven-appointed living porter at Mountaindale? No one. Absolutely no one. Hence, the entire company of Mountaindale marauders are imposters and humbugs, wolves and thieves. May they wake up to their peril, flee to Bayesian, where only they can become authorized shepherds. I sent a personal email to Samuel Gonzalez asking where his new website stand. He said in part, The current organizations are dispensing error and have been for many years. We have had to take the work and move forward with it because the leaders of these organizations have manifested no desire to forfeit their errors and repent of them. 
So what are the main teachings of the Davidians? Remember that they are Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, so much of the base of their beliefs are the teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, though of course there are some differences too. Davidians hold to a set of fundamental beliefs that begins with ones that match the ones the SDA Church had in 1940, and these say, for example, that the Bible is the only unerring rule of faith and practice. They affirm the doctrine of the Trinity, affirm the deity of Christ, his miracles, death on the cross, resurrection, ascension, and intercession for believers. They affirm the necessity of the new birth through faith in Christ and baptism following repentance and forgiveness of sins by immersion. They also say that the Ten Commandments are binding upon all men in every age and that observance of the Seventh-day Sabbath is required. Like the SDA Church, Davidians teach conditional immortality, that is, that only those who trust in Christ will have conscious existence in eternity, while those who do not will be put out of existence. They also teach that people who are dead are not in a conscious state. There is a future millennium before which believers will be resurrected and after which unbelievers will be resurrected to face judgment. During the millennium, the saints of all ages will live with Christ in heaven. Additionally, they affirm the teaching which is unique to Seventh-day Adventist groups that the year 1844 was predicted in Daniel 8.14 and is the time that the heavenly sanctuary was cleansed. Further, beginning in that year, Christ began a period of investigative judgment which continues to the present. Like the SDA Church, they affirm the teaching of the three angels' messages of Revelation 14. In addition, the tract published by Hotef titled Fundamental Beliefs and Directory of the Davidian Seventh-day Adventists listed 15 additional beliefs. These beliefs mostly concern interpretations of Bible prophecy. The first says that the prophetic gift in the Seventh-day Adventist Church ceased its manifestation in 1915 and was not re-manifested until 1930. This refers firstly to Ellen White, who was, as I mentioned earlier, said to have the gift of the spirit of prophecy and who died in 1915, and secondly, the beginning of the publishing work of Victor Hotef, whose Shepherd's Rod book was originally published in 1930. Many Davidians would refer to Hotef's published works as as inspired commentary. The second belief indicates that the prophetic gift of Hatef was predicted in Ezekiel 4 and also in one of the writings of Ellen White. The third belief tells the purpose of the Shepherd's Rod message and Davidian movement, which is to affect the sealing of the 144,000 servants of God and to give power and force to the three angels' messages. The fourth belief says that the destruction of the tares from among the first fruits of the living results in the purification of the church. This is explained in one of Hatef's writings further in this way. If the leaders in God's church at the present time should accept the 11th hour call, it would be out of the ordinary. But should they reject it, God cannot start a new movement, for there is time no longer. If there is no time for a new movement, then there is but one solution to the perplexing problem, and that is to separate the wheat from the tares by smiting the class who are controlling the work and keeping God's people in bondage of sin. Therefore, the enemies of God are taken out of the way by the five men of Ezekiel 9. This teaching, then, is that the biblical description of the separation of the wheat from the tares refers to a future time when a judgment will begin on those in the Adventist church who rejected the shepherd's rod teaching. Those who are found lacking in the judgment will be destroyed by angels. This will leave only 144,000 faithful people among the living. The 144,000 number is viewed as literal. Following this are several more eschatological teachings, such as a time of trouble immediately following the separation of the wheat from the tares, a worldwide decree enforced by the image beast that no one may buy or sell without worshiping the image, the 144,000 will have their names changed, and there will be a kingdom of God established in the promised land at that time before the millennium. This premillennial kingdom of God in the land of Palestine is one of the most distinctive beliefs of the Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. This will be a Davidic kingdom, and from this, Davidians get their name. Davidians also teach that after the unbelieving Adventists are destroyed and the 144,000 are sealed, they will witness to and convert a great multitude of people. There will also be a hundred-year season following the millennium in which the wicked will live before being finally destroyed. One Davidian blog at GodsLoveAndLaw.com tells of some of the other ways Davidians look different from mainstream Seventh-day Adventists. The blog says, what are some of the lifestyle differences of Davidians? They believe in a more strict converted lifestyle. They are more likely to live a reformed life than their SDA counterparts. For instance, they are strict vegetarians, non-moviegoers, rarely watch much TV, frequently doing scripture, Elijah message, or spirit of prophecy studies by themselves or with groups. On Sabbath, you'll find the women wearing head covering in church, wearing longer dresses versus their SDA counterparts. The men dress neat and presentable, often with shirt and tie, almost always with a Bible in their hand. Jewelry in all forms and flashy items of clothes will be shunned by them. 
Hatef wrote, One support of the timely Davidian message and is living out its principles, baptism, Sabbath observance, along with the rest of the Ten Commandments, vegetarianism, dress reform, total abstinence from tobacco and alcoholic beverages, and all else contained in the spirit of prophecy, are the truest witnesses of his affiliation and the only genuine visible certification of the fact. These are the only absolutely convincing evidences of one's worthiness to membership in the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist Association. What are the disagreements between the various Davidian organizations? The original structure of the Davidian organization was that the president was also the prophet, and so after Hatef's death, the vice president effectively was the highest office, as nobody claimed to have the spirit of prophecy. As a result, some Davidian organizations today still have this vice president without a president organizational structure, and others highly criticize it. The New Codes, those writings purportedly by Victor Hatef that he did not publish but that his wife did following his death, and whether they should be used is another major source of disagreement. This point itself is contentious, but then, if a person accepts use of the New Codes, some of what is taught in them contains different doctrinal teaching which becomes a further source of argument. Another area of controversy is the issue of tithing. What is the storehouse that tithes should be sent to? Some of the organizations claim to be the only legitimate place to which Davidians should tithe. Hatef had written, God's storehouse has ever been and ever will be where the message of the hour is, where present truth is, the house from which meat in due season is dispensed at the time the tithes are paid. Since the location tithes should go is dependent on who has the truth, there are competing claims among Davidians as to who meets the requirements. Several Davidian groups make arguments based on the geographic location of their headquarters. From California, Hatef moved the headquarters to Waco, and from there, some Davidians argue that it must continue to head east. This graphic is from the Salem Organization's website, along with an article titled, Why Salem is God's True Headquarters. Part of it says, 1970, Jesus said to move eastward. Mount Carmel in Riverside, California moved to Brother Hatef's rest home sanitarium in Salem, South Carolina to fulfill this. The Salem Association is born as God's third location for his headquarters. 1973, some Davidians who lived in California refused to accept that Ezekiel's stream, the flow of truth, was to flow eastward. They took the Salem Association to court, lost the case, and broke away from Salem to establish their own headquarters in the west, in Yucaipa, California. Unfortunately, the internet is so packed with descriptions of the branch Davidians that it can be difficult to find information on the Davidian Seventh-day Adventists, even though there are many websites that are part of them. If you want to continue your own research, the websites of the main organizations and some others are listed in the description of this video. Now don't forget to head over to the Useful Charts channel and learn about Christian denominations and where they come from with today's new release that includes Adventists and more.